Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So in this video, we are going to talk about how you can display texts in the pivot tables uh, values area. So this video is designed to address uh, one video that I created before wherein it's not perfectly made and I posted it. So here's the remake of that video. So here we have a, a regular range of cells and our plan is to create a pivot table out of this. And once we create the pivot table, we will then um, put texts within the values area. So let's first make the pivot table, a regular pivot table. So we click any one cell within the range of cells, and then we go to insert, and then we go to pivot table. And now that we have this create pivot table pop-up, we create a new worksheet, and then click OK. And then we're going to bring in the fields that we want to be part of our pivot. So let's bring in, let's say, the payment method in the rows area and then the amount and the values. So as you could see, it's just your regular pivot table, nothing special, okay, with this one. Let's bring in more data. Let's say, let's also bring in the salesperson before the payment method. And you will see that we have our amounts and uh, broken down by the salesperson and payment method, just a regular pivot table, nothing special here. Now, the next problem that I want is I want to show that if the total amount for that payment method is less than uh, 10,000, let's say that I'm going to put a comment of uh, discontinue, something like that. So the problem may not make sense based on the context, but what we want to show is how you put your words okay, within the pivot table itself. So for that, I need to make a calculated field. So for the calculated field, we just have to click any one cell within the pivot table range of cells. And then we go to analyze. And then under analyze, we go to fields, items, and sets. And under fields, items, and sets, we see here calculated field. So we have here the name of the field that we want. So let's say we want this to be the remarks. And for the formula, it says they're equal zero. Say that I'm going to create the formula and I'm going to make an if statement. So just like your regular if statement in Excel, you start with if, open parentheses. But instead of using cells, you have to use the fields here. So let's say that if the amount, insert field, is less than uh, 10,000, comma, and then let's say that we say something like uh, discontinue, and if not, then let's just say okay, just for the sake of example. So if the amount is less than 10,000, we get the word discontinue for this field, otherwise we click okay, or we get okay. And as you could see, if you click OK on that formula, you will get the error hashtag value. The hashtag value happens when the certain formula or the certain cell expects a certain data type and you're not giving that data type to that object. So in this scenario, the pivot table expects that you give it a number in the values area. And since we're telling the if statement to provide either discontinue or OK, we're getting hashtag value. So we need to do something about this, obviously. So we have to go back to analyze. We have to go back to fields, items, and sets, and we have to go to calculated field. And from here, instead of creating a new one, I'm going to drop this down, and I could see that I have the remarks here again. So I'll click it, and my formula here is back. If you need more help or you're interested in writing different formulas in a calculated field, Feel free to watch another video that I created about this. There's already a video about how to create formulas within pivot tables. Okay, but this video focuses on how to put texts. So the thing is, uh, the rule about uh, calculated fields is that you must make sure that whatever happens, a number will result out of this formula. And this formula totally violates that because the only two values that will come out of this formula is the words discontinue and okay. And these are both texts. So therefore, we're getting hashtag value all throughout the column. So we're going to change this. We're going to remove okay, those um, texts. We're going to leave the logical test because there's no problem with that. 
And instead of putting the words, we're going to bring in sort of like an equivalent number for those two words. So I'm going to say that if the amount is less than 10,000, the value will be 1. And if it is not, if it's false, I will put negative 1. And then close parentheses. So now whatever happens, the result of my formulation will be a number. It's either 1 or negative 1. And then click OK. So instead of getting the error, I'm now getting 1 and negative 1 in that column. However, this is not really our intention, right? We don't really want to put a legend somewhere here and just say 1 if it's discontinued, negative 1 if it's okay. We want the words themselves to be within the pivot table. So for that, we will sort of like make a cheat out of this. We're going to format the cells according to its um, value. And then I'm not talking about conditional formatting. I'm talking about number format. So what we're going to do next is we're going to right-click on any cell under the remarks, and then we're going to go to number format. Okay, take note, not format cells, because if you do format cells, it will only format the cell that you right-clicked. What you want to format is the entire column. So for the entire column, it's going to be this one, number format. And once you have the number format, you will have to select okay, the custom format. For the custom format, you will see here that you have the option to type something and it will have something like a default. It depends on what is your default custom format. So I will remove whatever it is there and I will type this. So the first thing that you have to type is what will show up in that cell if the value is positive. So the value is positive and that means that will be the discontinue. So I will put the word discontinue here. Okay, and notice how I placed quotation marks because as a general rule in Excel, if your value is text, you have to put it inside quotation marks. We're going to separate okay, with a semicolon. Okay, now the next one is what will show up in case the value is negative. It doesn't really matter what number, as long as negative, what should show up? And if you remember, it's actually the word OK. So with this two, we now have what will show up if the value is positive, semicolon, what will show up if the value is negative. So technically, this format doesn't really care what the number is you put in that calculation a while ago. What it really checks is if the value is positive or negative. Now, a format code like this has four parts. So we already have the first two. The positive, the negative, and we also have to indicate, we have to complete the rest. So for the next one, we're going to add another semicolon. What will show up if the value is 0? Now our formula doesn't really have any way to bring out 0 because our if statement was just 1 and negative 1. So it's pointless to put something here in this third part of the format code. So I'll just leave it like that. The fourth argument or the fourth part of the format code is what will show up if the value is empty. Take note that empty is not the same as zero. So there's also no point doing that. So I'll just go to put another semicolon, okay, so that I will complete the four parts of my format code. Okay, so first part is continue, second part, okay. Third part is that empty um, part, and then the last one is also empty. Because there's no way that I will bring out a zero and a blank in my formula. And with that, I will click OK. And as you could see, I now have my values okay, showing up within the pivot table itself. Okay, the texts. If you click on the cell that has the words, you will notice that the actual value is still the number that we have. It's just it's being formatted in a way that we controlled the format, okay, in that format cells. Take note, however, that the subtotals will also do the same. And there's nothing much really you can do here about this one. It's really part of the um, problem. So um, you can just remove the subtotals by going to design, subtotals, and do not show the subtotals so that it would look better like that. Or some people would do like a cheat and they would change the font color of the subtotals into white so that it will not be visible anyway.
And that's it. I hope this helps you somehow. And for those who watched the previous video, uh, thank you for going here. And if you, this video helped you, I appreciate a like and subscribe in the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section and I will try my best to answer that uh, question as soon as I can and probably even create a video for you. But for now, that is it. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.